Hi, my name is Bad Snacks. I'm a producer from LA, and today I'm going to show you how I make a track on Ableton Live using some of my own live instruments and then sampling them. So let's just jump right into it. So how I'm going to start this track is that I have all of these violin takes that I did with my electric violin and I did them in parts. I have violin one, violin two, and violin three, and they're all grouped respectively. And the way that I like to track my violins is I like to do them in triples so that I have one take that can be in the center, one take that's hard left, so it's panned all the way to the left, and then hard right, panned all the way to the right. And then with these three groups, I grouped them into a master group just so that it's a little easier to mix. So without any of my effects on, it sounds maybe a little bit thin just because that's the nature of electric violins being recorded directly through an interface. And it sounds like this. And the first thing that I did is I put guitar dirt on there and that's under audio effects under pedals here. So it's a preset right there. And um, if I turn up the wetness all the way just so that you can hear, it's a little bit intense. But I only want it to be texturally just a little thicker. So I'm gonna just bring down the dry wet to like 35%. And then to smooth it out, I put a third party reverb on here and I just set the mix to about 35% as well and then the decay so uh, it just doesn't get too drowned out. But it still breathes and kind of adds a nice space. So that's just a quick mix of how I did the violin. So I'm going to collapse this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new audio track and I'm going to root my violins straight into this audio track and record enable this. And then I'm going to record it. Okay, so now that I have my audio file here, I'm going to right click it and slice to new MIDI track. And I have it set to quarter notes because as you can see the transients, which are the loudest parts of the waveforms, they're not super pronounced here because the sample that I recorded is pretty legato, it's pretty sustained. So if I sliced it by transients, I probably wouldn't get great results, but I do know that I recorded it to a click. So if I slice it by a subdivision, I should be able to get some pretty interesting results. And just based on the BPM, I figured that half notes were a little bit too long, so I just went with quarter notes. So I'm gonna slice it now. And now we have it all mapped out to MIDI, and I'm going to record enable it. And if I hit any of the keys on my MIDI keyboard, it is now totally mapped out to my keyboard. So we don't need this audio track anymore, so I'm gonna just mute that and collapse it. And I'm going to delete this so that we can start tracking our new progression with the MIDI keyboard. My metronome is on up here, and I'm gonna just jump right into it and lay down a progression. So that was pretty close to on time, but I want it to be just a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna lightly quantize it. And quantizing just means uh, snapping it to the grid so that it's a little bit more on time. And I'm gonna do that by hitting Command Shift U. And that gives me this customization window, which I really like because I don't want it to be at 100%. I do kind of like the natural performance feel where the, there are some of these um, little spaces and breaks in between. So I'm going to go with maybe about 65%. And you can hear that some of the slices are played a little bit more quietly than others. Um, and that's because of the velocity of the keyboard. I hit them a little bit softer and I didn't entirely mean to. So I'm going to highlight all of these velocity stems at the bottom and I'm gonna just drag them up so that they're flush and that they're all the same volume and strength. So 
now we have kind of this foundation set here. I'm going to open up my sampler. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delay my attack so that they're not so harsh at the beginning. That's pretty good. And this is where it starts kind of getting interesting. So I'm going to take any slice. I might as well just start with slice one. And I'm going to transpose it up by five semitones. This is a technique that's used a lot in old school hip hop beats uh, with sampling, is that they'll take samples from like vinyl or wherever they get their source, and then they'll re-pitch it up. Um, it just adds kind of this really interesting quality that I really like. And even if I had performed this in a different key, it still wouldn't quite sound like this. So I'm going to re-pitch all of the slices, and I'm going to do that by right-clicking here and copy value to siblings. And now everybody is up five semitones. You can already hear the difference in quality of the sound. It just adds another characteristic entirely. So to make it a little bit more interesting for the listener, one thing that I really like to do in a lot of my compositions is I like to mess with panning quite a bit. So I'm gonna take some of the slices that are at the ends of these phrases here, like slice nine, and I'm gonna go to randomize panning. And basically what this does is it determines where between the left and right monitors the sound is going to end up. And I'm gonna do the same thing for slice 13. So again, randomized panning, and let's go to slice 17, and again, up 35%. So you can hear that these samples, it's the same one, but they ended up on completely different sides of my monitors. Um, and I just find that this is a really fun way to kind of play games with the listener and kind of uh, keep them on their toes, so to speak. And just as a quick mix, I'm going to throw this RC20 on there and it's just going to give it a little bit more of an analog characteristic. And I just want it to have a sense of space, so I'm going to throw a reverb on there. And I'm just taking an Ableton stock reverb and... I really don't have to do that much to it. I really like the way that it decays on this particular sample. I'm gonna just bring down the wetness uh, so that it's at 42%. Okay, so now that those samples are recorded, I want to create a little bit more of a framework with some drums. I'm going to create a new MIDI track by hitting Command-Shift-T, and I'm going to disarm this and I'm going to record enable this. I'm going to go to my favorite drum kits. I'm going to pull up my snack time kit, which is a drum rack that I made with some of my favorite kicks, some snares and claps. This clap in particular does have a bit crusher on it for extra crunch. And my metronome is on, so we're going to just jam out. and I have it on loop as well here. So I'm gonna just open this up so we can get to the MIDI window and I'm gonna lightly quantize these kicks by hitting Command Shift U. So I have it about uh, 16th notes at 70%. That sounds about right to me. And I'm also gonna lightly quantize just one of these snares. Sweet. So that sounds pretty good to me. And I'm going to go in here and I just want to add in like a little snare fill in this last section of the break. So I'm going to do that by going into draw mode, which all you have to do is hit B. And then you can start drawing in some fills. So.
So now I've laid down the foundation of my drums and I just want to dress it up with some percussion. So I'm going to go to this little folder I have here and I'm going to drag in this hi-hat loop that I have. I like a lot of this loop, but not all of it. Like I don't really like this open hat here. So I'm going to take the first three bars, copy and paste. And I don't really need anything beyond this point. So I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to consolidate it by hitting Command J, turning it into one audio file. And then I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command D. And then one more time, I'm going to highlight all of it, hit Command J just to turn it into one audio file that I have control over. I'm going to double click it, go to Beats Mode, Preserve Transients, and then I'm going to take it to this setting and I'm going to drag it down to 50. And what this does is it really tightens up the sound. As opposed to this. I just really like this setting because I find that high frequency percussion tends to take up a lot of sonic space. And by shortening the decay, it creates a lot more space and it just makes those grooves sound a little bit tighter. So I want to layer this. I want to add a little bit more texture to this. So I'm going to create a new MIDI channel, record enable it, go to my favorite drum kits, and then I have these snack time hats, which is really just a closed hat and an open hat. I'm going to go to this setting here, highlight both of them, and choke them to one. So by enabling the choke, it emulates how a real hi-hat would act because the two sounds can't be played at the same time. And because this is pretty on the grid, I do want to quantize this. Command Shift U. And yeah, 88% should do the trick. And then I'm going to duplicate this as well. And then I'm going to highlight both of these and put them in a group by hitting Command G. This is going to be my hi hats. And just real quick, I'm going to put a compressor on them. It's like a vintage style compressor. Old school crunch. I don't need it at 100% lo-fi. Uh, 50, 50 something will do. Nice. And it just warms it up. I really like the way it sounds. So then after that, I'm going to uh, put some ride symbols on the offbeat. So I'm going to create a new MIDI channel. I don't need it in the group. I'm going to record enable it. Go back to my samples. I have this one ride here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag it straight in here. Then I'm going to put it on one shot and trigger so that it just plays the sample. So I'm going to shorten it and then fade it out. And then play it on the off beats. And again, I'll just select the notes and quantize them. Now, you may notice this window over here. So this window is actually my track delay window. So what it does is it nudges the entire contents of your track forwards or backwards. And in this case, I'm going to nudge it backwards by 12 milliseconds. I'm going to make that sample just a little bit longer. So you can kind of start to hear it. It's a very nominal difference, but what I find is that when you have drums that are pretty on the beat, on the grid, and then you have some percussive elements that are slightly behind, uh, it just finds this really nice pocket in the music where the groove is accentuated just a little bit more. So uh, by having my off beats just nudged a little bit, I find that it just kind of accentuates the groove a little better. And I'm going to just throw the volume down quite a bit as well. Uh, 
And then the last thing I want to do with percussion for now is just import this little drum roll. It's a great fill that will work really well with this fill that we did earlier. And let's see. So now that I have my sample chops, my drum kit, and my percussion, I'm going to go back to mixing for a hot second. I personally really like mixing on the go because it gives me a really good idea of where the track is headed and what it might need. So I'm going to go back to my snack time kit and I'm going to drag the drum bus down. And I love using the drum bus because it just gives you so many different parameters to work with that are specifically for drum kits. So I'm gonna throw the crunch up and that's gonna give some more texture. I'm gonna throw the transients down and I'm actually going to emphasize the transients very similarly to how I emphasize the transients for my hi-hats here, but this is just another way to do it. But it's the same effect. It just makes it sound a lot tighter and cleaner and gives more space. And I'm gonna solo this one out so you can hear the difference. So this is without. And this is with it. So as you can hear, my kick is just going a little bit wild. So I'm just going to reduce the volume of the kick right on the drum rack. And in context, and that totally works. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw a side chain on my violins. Now, side chaining is a super popular technique in all kinds of music, and honestly, I think of it as kind of the secret sauce. And essentially what this does is it takes the audio signal from one track to trigger the compressor of another track. So every time a drum is triggered from my snack time kit, my violins are going to duck in volume. So the way I do this is I take a compressor and I hit side chain. I'm going to take the audio from the snack time kit. I'm gonna throw the threshold way down so it's like super sensitive. And because it's compressing so much, um, we need to kind of make up the difference and I'm gonna bring the output up. And now my violins are side chained. And as you can hear, there's just so much more groove in the mix now. So now I want to add pads and I'm feeling like an electric piano sound would be really good for this. So I'm going to create a new MIDI track. Uh, Command Shift T is my shortcut. And then I'm going to record enable that and go to instruments. This is a third party electric piano plugin and I have it set to Rhodes here and some plugins will sound a little harsh, especially if you have a very velocity sensitive keyboard. <laughs> doesn't sound very pretty. So to combat this, I go to MIDI effects and then I pull down velocity and I'm just going to adjust the curve of that velocity overall. So it can't really get much louder than a certain point. I'm gonna do like, let's do 85. And you can hear that it's already so much softer. So then I'm gonna just throw uh, an RC20 in there and make it sound nice and analog and warbly, take out the noise. And it sounds so nice. So I'm gonna just track that down. Now that I've laid down a pad with my electric piano, I want to layer that pad with a hardware synth. So I have a Profit Rev 2 here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new MIDI track and then I'm gonna record enable it. I'm gonna go to my instruments here and select external instrument. I'm using a complete interface and I have stereo signal three and four for a Profit Rev 2. So this is honestly one of my favorite things to do um, because it just makes selecting sounds so much easier. I could play um, MIDI notes directly through my computer. 
Mm. Or if I want to kind of take my time tweaking sounds, I can actually just take the MIDI clip from my electric piano and paste it to my external instrument track because I am just layering. And I can have this MIDI clip play my profit for me while I tweak sounds. So without even doing anything, if I just press play, this is what happens. I'm gonna just quickly rename this as Profit. So I want to record this as a audio track. So I'm gonna create a new audio track and I'm going to have my audio coming from three and four. I'm gonna record and enable it. So basically while the MIDI is playing my Profit for me, I have my hands free to tweak the sounds and stuff. So I'm gonna just record that real quick. We solo this out. So I just did a combination of tweaking the cutoff knob as well as uh, an LFO amount for the pitch. So I'm going to disable this by hitting zero and we don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna just mute it, um, but still keep it there just in case. And I'm gonna group these all together I'm going to put them as pads and then I am going to side chain them and I'm going to use my compressor from my audio effects. I'm going to side chain it from my snack time kit, but this time I want to be just a little bit more specific about how I side chain it. So I just want to side chain from the kicks and from the claps, but not the snares. So I'm going to go to this little drop down and then this is my kick that I'm using. So I'm gonna throw down the threshold like 40 and I'm going to just duplicate it. And instead of the kick, I'm going to use the crunch clap and let's see what we got. And we can turn up the output of both of these. Let's do like five. Nice, cool. So now we have just a lot more movement because of the side chains. So we have our samples, our drums, our percussion, our pads. So compositionally, it makes sense to lay down bass now. So I'm going to create a new track here, uh, Command T. I don't want it to be part of this group. I'm gonna just drag it down, then quickly rename it Bass. I'm going in through channel two of my interface, gonna record enable it and put it on auto monitoring so that I can hear it. So uh, I've already made a audio effect rack for this specific bass. So I'm gonna to go to my own user library here and I have electric bass under my audio effect racks. And I'm gonna just drag it. And I have here a drive from the pedals. I have an eight band EQ, a compressor and a limiter. So without any of this, it sounds like this. And with this. Yeah. So you can kind of hear the difference. It sounds a lot fuller, a little bit more texture uh, and the volume is a little more present without peaking. So let's just lay this down. Sweet. So I have a pretty fleshed out A part for the first eight bars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to expand upon that by taking the same instruments that I've set up and just recording new parts. So I'll show you that when I'm done. So I laid down all of these new clips in part B and I'm starting with the drum rack. It's the same drum rack. I just played it a little dancier. 
and then a new MIDI pattern for the violins. Same percussion. And then I used a tambourine loop that I repitched and put through a delay. New bass line. And then I made a new instrument with an arpeggiator, with an 8-bit plugin, with uh, a bit crusher, reverb, and auto pan, so it sounds like this. Yeah, and that's part B. So now I want to take some time to arrange this track because we don't want to just listen to loops all the time. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take these different clips and kind of mix and match them so that there are some parts that are a little bit more sparse and have more space and then they build up into larger sections so that it's not just all sounds at once that we have a kind of dynamic flow to the song. All right, so I made an intro that used a lot of the instruments and with a three band EQ, I automated it to give a filter kind of effect. So it starts from this kind of dark and dull sound and then gets brighter and brighter until the part A comes in where all the instruments are being played and it sounds much larger. And then in part B, I perform the instruments differently. So that's kind of the major variation there. But then there's a re-intro where I strip it down to just the electric piano and then EQ automate the synth in, then I bring back in the A part and it's kind of like a chorus or a hook effect. And then I did a variation of a B part where I actually mixed and matched the clips a little bit. So now the B part violins were going to be played over the road sound and the synths. And then compositionally it sounds much more like a conclusion uh, that it combines different elements of part A and part B. And then the outro is just the electric piano completely stripped down and then faded out. And that's kind of how I created it into a little bit more of a song format. Cool, so that's how I made this track using Ableton Live. And as an instrumentalist, it's so fun being able to record an initial idea and then sample it and turn it into something completely different. So hopefully you enjoyed watching some of these techniques. I had a lot of fun making this and thank you for watching. Bye.